we're going to look at the wonderful world of AI slop. Right, um, which I actually quite like as a term because it's exactly what I think of it. Right, you know, there was an interesting article that came up recently with some researchers had come up with this idea that that they they calculated that approximately fifty percent of the new articles appearing online are now generated by AI. So we're now at the point where the internet is quickly becoming saturated by content that maybe didn't even have a human involved at any stage in the production process. And I guess there's a question of what that means. Right, is that good that that's happening or is it bad? But if it's bad. Why specifically is it bad rather than just it doesn't sound right? You know, can we think about it in a little bit more detail? Why would people generate content with AI is perhaps the first question to ask. And the answer usually comes down to because it might make money. Let's imagine I want to change career. I want to make money off the internet. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to produce a lot of content that people read and then they get adverts at the same time and then I make small amounts of money for each visit. Right? That's basically how the internet works. And... I am not very good at things, right? So I can't, I'm not very good at cooking, I'm not very good at building things, and so on. I, I've seen some of your websites, Mike. I've got you've to be seen honest. some of my websites. You've definitely seen some of my drawing in previous videos. I'm not going to win any art prizes. Sort that out in post for me, please. I'm good at writing academic work, but I'm not good at writing, you know, creative work. So I need a way to produce a lot of content very, very quickly. And now I have all these chatbots and, and large language models that can do this for me. So my plan would be let's suppose I start up a blog for you know, recipes. Right? Now, I could have a completely plain website, this would be much easier for me to develop, a completely plain website that just has the kind of literal recipe pasted on it, right? I'd like this as a, re as a recipe website, right? Just absolutely nothing, it, no pictures, just follow these steps please, and then you'll have food. But that's not actually what people read. What people want is a little bit of sort of flourish, a picture of what they might hope the food looks like if they can follow the instructions. But also, you know, often you'll see a little bit of narrative of why this recipe is important to a certain person, right? Maybe it was passed down from their grandparents or something like this. And that means something that they, that they did that. That's the idea. And so maybe you think, well, if they've bothered to hand this down, there must be some value in it. And so I'm going to try this recipe out for myself. So I want to do this and I want to do it on the cheap. So what I'm going to do is just copy a bunch of recipes and then have AI write this narrative. So can you please take this recipe, write it into a nice web page with some spiel about a grandma who worked on this and it was all very nice and everyone liked it. And I'll do this in bulk and then create a website. Now, most people are not going to read it, right? Most people are not going to be interested in my personal ability to cook, even if my recipes are good because I've copied them from elsewhere. I'm not sure what will happen if you just ask a large language model to come up with a recipe from scratch. It might Oh, but ultimately, probably read enough of them. They've been used in the training set, right? So let's let's assume that would work as well. Either way, it's not about big numbers. It's about I've created now a website with almost it's almost zero cost to myself, and I put it online. I, I fill it with adverts, and then I just let small but notable amounts of money roll in. Right? That's what AI slop is about. It's about creating content that some people probably don't want to read, but will find themselves reading. They'll be exposed to the advert. They'll be exposed to the adverts, and then. Um, and then from there we go, right? And, and the other reason you might do it is for like political reasons. So you might say, well, I want to get my point of view across by producing lots of AI that supports a certain position or refutes a certain position or something like this, right? So there's lots of reasons why you might, you might do it other than, other than just money, but often it comes down to money. The question is, is that a good thing that that's happening? And I would argue that it's very much not a good thing, right? And I think it's pretty obvious to most people watching why I might think that, right? I think it's important that there was a reason that something existed, right? That someone thought about it and curated it and tried things and came to a conclusion that this was something they were willing to endorse and recommend. I, in some sense, that's a subjective opinion, right? I don't know why, sort of, objectively that is better, but it feels better, right, to me. And so that's kind of where I sit. And so there's, you know, huge amounts of talk about the threat of AI and artificial general intelligence and so on, I think a much more pressing and a much bigger issue is what is about to happen to the state of the web and political interference, fake news, fake websites in general just copying people's hard work and putting it else, else, elsewhere with an advert on. Right? We've not think... even got to video generation and deep fakes and all the rest of it. Exactly. This is just We've not even got there. And, you know, if you go on YouTube, there are loads and loads of videos that are some controversial political argument between two people and the argument never actually happened, right? It's just complete fake narrative, slightly AI sounding voice 
right? And they don't have huge numbers of views. They have, let's say, 5,000 views, which on YouTube is not that many, but they have some views. And they either change from opinions or they obtain some small amount of ad revenue, but either way, it doesn't seem like a very good thing. Let's revisit this research, right? So this, this research basically said, what they'd done is they'd sampled a bunch of um, recently cached websites. They made decisions over whether they were AI or not. And they now calculate that the percentage of AI articles has now reached 50%. So gone above the number of human articles. They broke each document into chunks. And if 50% of the chunks were judged by an AI to be AI, then it's AI, right? Now, we can question that approach and decide whether we think that's a sufficient grounds to say 50%. But, but it's not 0%. I think that's important. And I think we all think it's going up, right? And, you know, you can see from the videos you're recommended or from the websites that get returned in searches and so on and so forth, that there is an increase, right? And there's no reason really to think that it will go down because AI is not getting harder to use, right? There's more AIs com AI tools coming out all the time. And if there's money to be made, people will try and do it. And so let's assume the number is going up. What does that mean? Well, it has a few implications. First of all, it becomes much harder for people, search engines to give people the correct information and for people to find that information. The quality of search engines is a different video. I think the, the current quality of search engines is probably... It's a different video, right? But it's not an easy problem. And it also actually has a knock-on effect on the ability to train AI, right? Whether we like it or don't like it, most AI, the big large language models, are trained by scraping vast amounts of text from the internet, right? And, you know, there are lawsuits going on about copyright, uh, reasonably so, right? Because it's not decided what the, you know, ethically or legally correct way of doing this is. So search engines, we know, they work using web crawlers. So they work with automated software that goes around websites, it looks at links, it follows those links, it reads web pages, and it starts to index these websites for search later. In a way, AI crawlers do a very similar thing. They go to websites, they look for links, they follow them, they read text, and they put it into the training set, such that the models get better and better at writing good quality text. Um, these web crawlers are running right now, they continue to run, and now the content that they're, dis they're discovering is 50% generated by themselves, by AI. And so what effect does that have on the AI? Well, suppose that AI has a certain style of writing, and we, we, you know, sometimes you see these kind of, should we say, like, you know, AI mannerisms in the text, right? Whether we like them or don't, they do exist. These things are going to occur more frequently in AI-generated text, almost by definition, which means that the training set will then have an increased number of these things. You know, consider also that AI, as we know, has a chance of producing text that isn't true, right? Because they, they predict words, and those words may align to phrases and sentences that are false. The outcome will be that of the 50% of the web that's now produced by AI, some of it won't be true. And that goes in the training set as well. Let's say, you know, optimistically, your, your, your facts produced by your LLM are 95% accurate. Now, 5% of the, of the 50% is false. So your training set is now more false than it was before, right? That's assuming that the internet was completely correct before we started, which of course is a different, yes, you know. So you, it's not hard to see that if you iterate this process, the percentage of correct information on the internet and the, percent, the percentage of good quality text from which to learn will decrease. I know from my time working with you and your colleagues and training network neural networks on image recognition and things like that, that, that often you use synthetic data in that, which is, as I understand it, things like, well, AI generated data or mirrored data yep. or things where you want to just increase the size of the data set. Yep. And that seems to work. So what's the problem here? Then? I mean, I think it works if you're very careful, right? Often, if you produce only synthetic data and you train something, it won't work on real data, or it will work less well than you'd hope. And that's because there are subtle differences between your ability to produce synthetic data and, you know, capture real data. So maybe you want to detect, you know, problems in MRI scans of, of, of people, right, for medical imaging. You could produce a bunch of fictitious MRI scans using, let's say, 3D rendering software with a bunch of fake illnesses in it and hope that that would produce better results when trained on real patients, or tested on real patients. But, you know, the answer is it might, it might not. So what you often do is you mix synthetic and real, right? But you're always working to make the synthetic as good as you can. You don't, you don't purposely put in bad and misleading synthetic data. 
And I think also you don't typically just use synthetic data. It so, is, so it's carefully curated then? It's carefully curated. And I think that's probably where AI training will have to go. Right? I think it will become unviable to just scrape everything on the internet if, the lar if a large proportion of the internet becomes written by AI. You will have to be much more careful scraping that data. And, but, but there's a problem of scale. The reason we scrape automatically is because the web is too big for, for a few people to read. If you think that these models are trained on possibly trillions of tokens, right? trillions of words and phrases, the... The idea that we can look at them and go, oh, no, that's a bit of AI slop, I won't use that in the training set, is not practical. Right? So then you're trying to build systems to detect what is and what isn't. You're try and, and you end up using sources you trust. Right? You say, well, I know that this website produces good quality human written text, so that's what I'm going to focus my scraping on. Right? And actually, I think in a way, that may be where we as people and as, as, as people who consume this content may go as well. Right? If you know that a certain website has specialists who write on a certain topic, you might prefer to read that than you would some generic AI written blog that may or may not represent the true facts in this case, or certainly hasn't got a person overseeing that process. Do you know what this reminds me of? Mm. Email. Yes. Right, okay. So I know if I get an email from you that it's, you know, it's likely to be okay. Likely, not, not always. Um, but we get so much email every day and yep. some of it is absolute tripe spam. Yep. Maybe it's scams, all that sort of thing, phishing emails. But also huge amounts of emails from retailers. I've got an email address that I've had since the 90s. It gets a huge amount of unsolicited email yeah and and this feels like similar to kind of what's going on with the web at the minute i think in a way that's exactly right and maybe that's also sort of a premonition as to what will happen next it could be that as we say as we decide i don't want to read this because i don't think it's either factually accurate or particularly useful to me i want to read something written by a person who is an expert then i might stick to specific websites i know and trust mm -hmm. right in the same way that i stick to specific recipients of emails that i know and trust and I broadly ignore the kind of low-level spam that goes on and just goes into my junk mail folder or sometimes into my inbox and then to my junk mail folder when I see it, right? Mm. And so actually, we could imagine a situation where the internet fills with AI-written stuff that no one really reads and everyone broadly ignores. It occasionally gets some use, but is not actually improving much, right? You know, a bit like how I don't think most people think that we're better off for getting all these spam emails. Yeah. On occasion, some company that you really like will draw your attention to a product that's on sale or something or like this. Or a promotion or something. But in some ways, that isn't spam. That's you having a specific company you like, right? In the same way that when you receive an email from me, you hope it will be at least somewhat useful, right? And, and again, sometimes it is, uh, sometimes it isn't. I think that's exactly what might happen, right? You know, given that we probably can't stop people using AI to produce generic content, we may just start to ignore it. Right? Or maybe we install, let's say, plugins for our browser that say this is a spam website and we just don't even go to it. I'm assuming here that AI won't continue to improve in a way. And, and of course it might, right? Someone might come up with some new technology or some new way of training that massively improves the rigor of some of these articles, right? That's an assumption that that might happen. I'm, think, I'm always wary when making these assumptions of when we did the video with a professor from Cambridge who talked about, oh, no, no AI will ever beat people at Go. Yeah, exactly, and right. Three months later, you know, it did. And, and in a way, I'd like to make no assumptions, right? If AI becomes way better, I think there is still a place for experts and, you know, let's say reporters that you know and trust and you know they will deliver the facts and they will fact check those things, right? If AI doesn't get better, then that's definitely the case. Either way, I think... As I already mentioned, I personally think that having a human there gives some weight to it because someone who's trained and made an effort to curate this content and put an effort into it and put their name on it, I think that's worth something. Right? And so I think that there will, be, there will continue to be demand for these things. In the short term, there may be a knee-jerk reaction that there is no demand, but I suspect we will find that over time we come back to some of these content sources because they're better and, and give us more value. No, I, I think you need to do a, a approximation of a pigeon. It has to have wings. Oh, that's sweetie pie, beautiful. It, oh, it's not great, is it? All right, I put a pigeon in a hole. Now, I've got some spare holes, so I'm gonna put one over here 
And now, you see, now you've forced me to draw a load of pigeons, so I, I'm, so I'm not happy about this. Yeah, I don't know.